We mentioned the Miami Dolphins earlier as it relates to the possibility that they will pursue Tom Brady. They have landed some big fish, the uh, aquatic mammals have in Miami, and they've gotten Kyle Van Noy away from the Patriots. They have added Byron Jones, the Cowboys cornerback, the richest cornerback contract in NFL history to go along with Xavier and Howard at number two. They're on the same team now. And they added Eric Flowers yesterday as well. So the Dolphins doing what they can to spend their cap dollars in advance of using their draft picks to try to make the team better. And the, the blood is in the water, whether it's the Bills trying to improve or the Dolphins trying to improve. The Patriots aren't going to have Tom Brady. So the window is open for someone to take over the AFC East. Yeah, no, it is. It's there to be had. And, you know, the, the I mean, impressive start to free agency. You know, they need an improvement on their offensive line. Get Eric Flowers, not to any huge money. Eric Flowers, hey, he kind of corrected his career when he went to the Washington Redskins and got going there. So that was a nice signing there. But then you could see Flores is trying to emulate what he had in New England before he left. You know, I kind of said this on social media yesterday. He's recreating Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson, who are arguably the best duo in football. They're going to have a challenge now whether they'll be the best duo in their own division. Because for me, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard are two of the top five or six best corners in football. Byron Jones, when he's healthy, you can make a case when you watch him on film, Mike, and go, oh, he's the most talented guy in the sport at the corner position. So, yeah, then Kyle Van Noy, as we know, he's a Swiss Army knife as far as the things you can do with him in the front seven. So great start for free agency for the, uh, I mean, uh, for the Miami Dolphins. You know, got some culture guys and got some guys that are certainly going to improve their football team. I'll tell you what, if I'm throwing a dart here, and I may be blindfolded and there may not even be a dartboard, but w without the 49ers interested in Tom Brady, there really isn't a place that screams out, he will win there right away. Right. And I, 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 we cannot overlook the Giselle factor. She's dealt with all these years of Tom playing for the Patriots and continuing to play well past the retirement age for most football players. When she married him, she probably figured by the time this guy's 42, he won't be playing anymore. If she says, I want to go to Miami, that's going to be a factor. And I think he could convince himself that they can be competitive, at least as competitive as the Buccaneers, as competitive as the Chargers. And unless there's a team that has that clear-cut Super Bowl window, and other than the 49ers, uh, again, who don't want him, there's no other team that would even have the the glimmer of an opening that that has realistic Super Bowl aspirations. I just I feel like the, I hear you. the Dolphins are, are a legitimate spot for Tom Brady. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. I mean, there's a lot to like. And, of course, he's going to be comfortable with Brian Flores. And to what we talked about, you know, a little earlier where I said, you know, I think there was a sense that some coaches are a little scared of Brady. Of course, that won't happen with Brian Flores. I mean, he's running things just like New England. And, you know, Chris Greer, I've heard nothing of but good things about him. So it certainly won't be a culture shock if Brady goes there. And the lifestyle and the city, to your point, Mike, all makes sense. It's just about whether Brady would want to deal, you know, with one year here of kind of them continuing to get their feet underneath them uh, as they build a, a real winner here, which I think they're going to build. They're going in the right direction. I just, I, I don't know. In my heart of hearts, I just don't know if Tom Brady would sign up for that right now. And, and, and let's apply a small twist to what we were saying yesterday. And previously, if there's not going to be an offseason program, it makes sense for Brady to want to stay with the Patriots. It also made sense for the Patriots to want Brady, but that didn't work out. But if he's going to leave, he needs to go to a place where he knows that when he shows up, it's going to be like the Patriots, right? right. So the Dolphins right. are at the top of that list. You don't know what you're getting into with Bruce Arians. You don't know what you're getting into with Anthony Lynn. There's just a few places where you would have confidence that when you walk through the door, there's going to be an expectation level that the Patriots always had, and that's Detroit, and that's Miami. And where else? Am I missing anyone else? Houston, probably Houston. Yeah. And that ain't going right. to happen because they got Deshaun Watson. Right. So, no, uh, I know. And, 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 and the Lions are all in with Matthew Stafford. They're not making that trade, although uh, I, I, I don't want to get down that rabbit hole again. I think the Lions <laughs> are keeping Matthew Stafford. I just think the Dolphins make sense for Tom Brady, especially when the alternative short term is Ryan Fitzpatrick. And they have enough draft picks. 
that they can load up the cannon to win now and also draft a guy who can be groomed by Brady. And if Brady's only going to be there three years maximum, he's not going to be threatened by the guy like he was threatened by Garoppolo. I just think it makes too much sense. I feel like it's going to yeah, happen. I, my, pot, my pasta and meatballs gut is starting to is starting to respond well to this scenario, Chris. Uh, okay, I, I, listen, I hear you. There's a lot of things to connect there. I think, okay, if I just had to go with my, um, you know, I don't know, I don't get pasta and meatballs because I got no Italian in my gut, okay? So if I had to go with my meat and potatoes gut over here, okay? I got a lot of chicken soup in my gut. Uh, I'm going to say the Chargers are the team. If I had to pick one right now, that I say he ends up at. I, and I have no inside information or that, but I'm just going gut feeling like you. Would you rather have Cam Newton or Tom Brady if you're the Chargers? Woo, man. Man, you love putting me on the spot. But I, I think I'd, you know, of course, we're, we're assuming medicals check out with Cam Newton and everything like that. I would rather have Cam Newton at this point. I would. You know, it's just, again, Brady at this age, I worry about injury. I worry about his ability to want to stand in the pocket and make big throws. And, you know, uh, you know, I just worry about, you know, injury in, in general. Him pulling a hamstring or, you know, pulling a calf muscle can change your team and you could be back in the same boat you're in right now next year if he decides he wants to call it quits. So that's why I would favor Cam Newton. Yeah, and, and look, Cam Newton's going to want a new contract. Uh, he's made that clear already. Yeah. He's making $19 million. It's It's embarrassing in comparison to the current market, but that's going to be a factor. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.